hello this is <laughs> today we are going to be talking about all the books i read in february let me put these down okay so i read 12 books in february four of which were sci-fi and fantasy and two of those were young adult fantasy and science fiction and four were romance with one being a young adult romance. I read one literary fiction, one nonfiction, and then two thriller books. I also DNF'd two of the books I read this month so I only completed 10 of the 12 books that I'm going to be talking about today. So let's get right into it. Okay, so starting with science fiction and fantasy, the first book I read this month was actually House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J. Mass, and this was honestly my most anticipated release of the year. I spent all of January pretty much rereading Throne of Glass and then reading the first two books of the Crescent City series, and I did make a video, so if you want to see my full reactions to the full series here, you can do that. And this is actually the third book in the series, and we're following the main character, Bryce, again, and and this world is really complicated. It has a bunch of different magical species and it's in an urban setting, which was kind of a new thing for me in the fantasy genre. And I did love, 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 love. I gave both of the first two books five stars. They were so fun and I was so excited for this book and I unfortunately gave it a four stars. I was kind of disappointed with how the ending of the last book played out in this book. The whole middle of the book pretty much just dragged on for me because there was so much info dumping and I just had to say if you are excited for this book that's totally okay but maybe just lower your expectations a little bit you know just because i read a book poorly doesn't mean that it's poor but again because of how the last book ended and i know a lot of people were feeling the same way and then i know a lot of people were also let down so just want to be transparent with that. I will say we got a resolution towards the end of this book of the main conflict throughout the three books in the series and I think it was underwhelming for me because it's been built up for three books and it was what 50 maybe 100 pages if that so that was really really underwhelming for me and I wish it would have been a bigger deal than what it was if that makes sense the final battle that is what I also really didn't like in this book was Bryce she really like irked me in this book and I don't know why I enjoyed her character more in the other two books but this book she annoyed me it was not good but the side characters definitely carried this book for me that's just what I'm gonna say about it. The next two books that I read that were fantasy were YA fantasy and this is Divine Rivals and Ruthless Vows. I did make a video on this also and that was reading 2023's most popular duology. They both came out last year and Divine Rivals like won the Goodreads Choice Awards. It's a number one New York Times bestseller and it was so good. I gave both of these books five stars. So starting with Divine Rivals, we're really getting into the world and it's not really a complicated world. We're more focused in on the main characters. We do get dual point of views in this book. So that's nice. So you get the male main character and the female main character. And there's also other characters in this book. So it's not just about the romance. There's war, there's love, there's loss there's kind of a journey out into the world of a young character and it really is an exciting story and beautifully told and then there is the epilogue I think it is or it might be the last chapter is off a cliffhanger so you really want to reach for this book and oh my goodness did this book deliver it delivered sometimes sequels don't deliver I gave this five stars also this was a beautifully told sequel we get conclusions we get resolutions we get so many um human emotions are portrayed in these characters and it's really beautiful and the first book is like 350 pages this book is 410 so they're really short really, really easy to get into really easy to digest if you're just getting into fantasy this is definitely a book for you and then the last science fiction book that i read this month that i actually did not finish or put down dnf whatever you want to call it was dune so this is yes the book that the dune movies are based on and i think it actually comes out march 1st so it will probably be out by the time this video is up but i wanted to read this because i watched the first dune movie and heard it was about a book so i was like oh, i want to read the book and then i sat down to read it, this and this is very very intense science fiction and my brain just was not in the mode for that so i put it down i do want to continue it in the future and i don't think i would have wanted to continue it into the future if i didn't see the first movie before I picked this book up because watching the movie and having that background helped me understand what they were saying because there's all these weird names for things and you just have no idea what 
characters are talking about because you don't know what the thing is so it's really confusing at first but if you're a regular sci-fi science fiction reader this is definitely a great book i'm pretty sure it's a classic i'm definitely going to be picking up picking it up again in the future it just wasn't for me this month what are we going to talk about next let's talk about romance I did read four romance books this month. One of them was on my Kindle and the first romance book I read this month was my YA romance Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. If you love Allie Hazelwood this is a great book. I rated it four stars. It was definitely a cute romance but I did want more of the main character and we did get a big chess piece in this book and it made me want to play chess again. The chess aspect and the competitions that was a lot of the fun of this book if you're looking for a fun Allie Hazelwood style book definitely pick this up great read okay this is marketed as YA and I just do not think it should be YA there is definitely explicit content talked about by minor characters and that just didn't sit right with me so that's why I didn't get a five stars it probably would have gotten close to if it was a adult romance so the next romance I read was actually on my kindle and that is The Love Wager by Lynn Hainter honestly I don't remember a lot about what happens in this book but I just remember the characters in this book one of them is like the sibling of one of the main characters in her other book Mr. Wrong Number uh, I gave this I think a 3.5 stars and it is like a classic Lynn Painter rom-com it's such an easy read if you're just looking for a book to pick up with no brain power required whatsoever and just fly through it this is definitely the book for you the characters were enjoyable just not super memorable is what i'll say towards the end of february i actually did start the magnolia park series so these i'm pretty sure are marketed as a romance series slash books but there's so much more than that it's definitely about the romance but it's also about just like a group of friends who are super rich and are British. I've heard it be referred to as like the gossip girl of books, just London, not New York. And I think that's accurate. I do think these books need trigger warnings because they do touch on emotional topics that I think should be disclosed at the beginning of the book. I gave the first book that I read four stars. It was fun. It is really addicting. So if you're looking for an addicting read, kind of an emotional roller coaster, you want to be invested in the characters, this is definitely a good book for you. If you're also into fashion, surprisingly, this would also be a good book to you or if you're just into like the friendship dramas the relationship dramas the ups and downs yes this would be a good book so i actually read the second book also this month and that is the daisy hates book so we do get different perspectives in this book and this book so we get two characters perspectives in this book and we get three different characters perspectives in this book and i actually think i like this one more i gave this a four and a half 4.25 and so this got a higher rating than the first one i just enjoyed the female main character more i feel like that's why i relate to more but i also enjoyed this other two characters perspective we got in this book and i enjoyed the relationship more in this book and i was sad at the end with what happened so i'm definitely looking forward to reading the next Daisy Hates book and finishing off this series. So yeah, if you read Magnolia Parks, honestly, you got to pick up the rest of the series if you're wanting to get emotionally attached to characters who are kind of crazy, who have crazy lives, who are insanely rich. This is a great series for you. And then I did read a nonfiction book this month, but I don't have it with me it was a library book and that is longitude by deva sobel so i gave it a three and a half stars and it is the story of how longitude was discovered by a nobody englishman and it was an interesting story about history i just found myself getting bored with it so if you are the type of reader that enjoys history and learning about these things if you're a sailor honestly i feel like it would be interesting to you but what was interesting to me is i realized how advanced we are today in modern society compared to even just 50 but even it was like 250 years ago even which is actually crazy to see how far we've come they didn't know longitude which are the lines that run from the north pole to the south pole they were trying to figure out how you figure out where you are basically on the seas or like how far away you are from the point you left to the point you're going because you wouldn't know if you were at sea and it's basically yeah the story of the clock making how it all came about so again 3.5 stars and yeah that was my nonfiction read of the month. I read nonfiction at a much slower rate than I do fiction. I feel like I absorb it better when I don't read it faster, especially if it's kind of more of like a self-helpy type book or things like that. So I did also read a literary fiction, again, that I don't have the copy of, and that is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I gave that a five stars. I loved, loved, loved this book. If you're looking for 
a strong female character, a interesting storyline, great side characters, and a fun romance subplot. This book is definitely for you. It had all of those things. And then on top of that, it has tennis and a competition aspect as well, which was a lot of fun. I loved the tennis aspect of this book. So the main character is a professional tennis player and we get to see her kind of come back, hence the name Carrie Soto is back. And I really enjoyed her character just because I haven't read a female main character like her before and how she is just so singularly focused on achieving her goal of tennis and like being the best in the world. And it was a lot of fun to read, honestly. If you like Taylor Jenkins read, again, a great book for you. Five stars for me. I had so much fun reading it. It was a little slow at the beginning and I wasn't thinking I was gonna give it five stars in the first 70 or so pages, but definitely as I read further onto the book as I was watching the character develop and grow it became clear to me that it was a five star book. So that was my one literary fiction book and my last genre of the month is thriller. So I read two thriller books, one I DNF'd and that was A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Again with Dune I'm going to be picking this up again in the future. It just wasn't for me at the moment that I picked it up and that's okay. I want to read this book again in the future and I want to get into the series. I enjoyed what I read so far but just other books grabbed my attention more. So that is why I put this book down. And then the last book I read this month, I don't have it again, a library book is None of This is True and you guys, this was crazy. I read this book in a day. I only gave it four stars though. But if you are into thriller books, this book is definitely for you. I believe it's by Lisa Jewell and she has some other books that I'm on the radar for, but my brain was fucked. I don't have a better word for it. Yeah, it was, wow. It reminded me of listening to a crime junkie podcast. I was so enthralled, I couldn't put it down and I just needed to know what happened. I will say though, it was kind of telling a lot more than showing. I don't know if that's just how the thriller genre is, but I do think that contributed to my lower rating, but I don't think it took away from the book, if that makes sense. I kind of read like you're watching a documentary and if you read the book, you'll know what I mean because there is an aspect of a documentary in the book. You just want to get to the ending to know what happens and then the ending is kind of like Verity if you have read Verity by Colleen Hoover where it's like, what is true? Hence the name none of this is true. It's really interesting, great read. I think if you like thrillers, again, you would really enjoy it. So those are all the 12 books I read in February. I can't believe the month is over. It was such a big reading month for, excuse me. It was such a big reading month for me. I had so much fun reading these books. I'm excited to see what books come my way in March. If you guys read any of these books, please let me know your thoughts and opinions on them. I'd love to hear that. And thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.